You're an ENFP, an MF, no. MFP, and I'm an INTP. Extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and perceptive. Mm -hmm. While you are introverted, intuitive, thinker, thinker, and perceptive. Or are you judging? No, I'm not judging. We don't judge. Order, order in the court. Thank you. Now. All rise. The Court of Public Opinion is now in session. The Honorable Chief Justice Kristen and Associate Justice Austin presiding. Now calling to trial the multiverse's most controversial social debate topics. They shall be resolved once and for all. You may be seated. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion podcast, where the debates are legend, wait for it, dairy, or lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give me that. No. <laughs> uh, who are we? <laughs> I am your Chief Justice, Kristen Bradley. And I am your Associate Justice, Austin Andrade. Happy <laughs> World Plant Milk Day, everybody. And hi! Guess what? We're on YouTube now! So, if you want to see our faces while we debate, go look up Court of Public Opinion Podcast on YouTube, or you can click the link in the episode description where we'll be working on getting all of our previous debates up here as well. But also, it's episode 10! Woo! We made it to double digits. How cool is that? And Kristen is still here despite last week's Flat Earth frustrations. So, yay! Thanks for still being here, Kristen. Uh, not my choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we have reached our 10th episode and we have broken the single digit monotony, I would like to take a quick moment to thank everybody out there for listening over the past two and a half months. According to our analytics on Anchor.fm, the majority of our listeners are in California and Arizona, but... <laughs> we see you guys in other states. Colorado, Virginia, Nevada, Georgia, to name a few. Thank you, guys. And we also currently have zero listeners from Florida, which is probably because Kristen tore Florida to shreds in her Disney debate. Relax, buddy. I literally only tore the weather to shreds. Uh, you shat all over Florida and everything. No, you were just like, the weather. Too many hurricanes, which is weather. <laughs> the, the Fair we enough. <laughs> the weather in Florida does bad things to my hair, so. So it's a personal bias, I see. Well, against we the weather. <laughs> We also have listeners outside of the United States, so shout out to our international peanuts. Like 3% of you in Canada. Howdy, neighbors! <laughs> or that group of you that's scattered throughout Europe in Norway, Spain, and Ireland. <laughs> we also have at least one person in Australia. Who I am choosing to believe is Chris Hemsworth, so thanks for listening, Chris. And then probably one of Kristen's distant relatives from the Philippines is listening. What's up, extended family? The Kayaban or Ina's family. Much love, guys. Thank you all for being here with us. We're so glad you're enjoying the show. <laughs> so please rate and review the Court of Public Opinion and tell your friends. Yeah, let's get this thing spreading like a global pandemic. Is it? Is that not funny? Is it too soon? <laughs> Dear Lord! <laughs> But because we made it to 10 whole episodes of Copapod, we're also starting a Patreon page. Yeah, I know. Lots of things going on this week. So if you'd like to support us, you can find us by searching Court of Public Opinion Podcast on Patreon or just type patreon.com slash copapod. That's patreon.com slash C-O-P-O-P-O-D in your browser. And you guys can donate to the show to make this an even better experience for you and for us because we can buy cool stuff anyway we're having fun yeah and i'm having we can all have fun together i am so beyond hyped to be 
in front of this different setup. And I, you can see Austin's room. This is my bedroom. This is our studio. This is the courtroom, guys. Well, Liam Neeson Hi, Liam. judging us in this corner <laughs> and Stitch judging us in that corner. <laughs> How are we doing this week? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> last weekend or two, still not understanding how time works in podcast land, uh, we went to that drive-in concert that we mentioned before that was in Ventura, and it was awesome, like we predicted. Uh, people were parking in concentric circles around the stage. Everybody had to wear masks if they got, of, if they got out of their cars, but a lot of people had to... Oh. I wrote this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You have no idea what you're saying right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> That's true. I did read it beforehand, though. <laughs> People parked in concentric circles around the stage and had to wear masks if they got out of their cars. But there were a lot of people who just stayed in their cars. They they had beds set up in their truck beds, but like legit beds on top of their beds. And they just watched the whole show from their, their bed beds. <laughs> There was a group of people behind us who had a huge setup with, like, an American flag and then just tons of cowhide blankets <laughs> across their entire bed. It was crazy. It was freezing, and I wanted their cowhides I because I neither of us were smart enough to bring mm -mm. layers. Didn't pack. <laughs> I, had a, I was like, it's summer in California. Why do I need that? <laughs> By the beach. I had a real cute outfit and a long sleeve on, so I was like, I don't need a jacket. Oh, Gosh. also on our way back from Ventura... Uh, we drove to Malibu and did a fun walk through the Pepperdine campus slash surrounding neighborhood full of super expensive, super cool, some not so cool houses. And we were just kind of, I was kind of. Yeah, we've been judging the housing a lot lately. <laughs> it's what I do. It's a guilty pleasure to go on to uh, Redfin and Zillow and everything to yeah, I'm gonna... judge people's houses. One of these days, HGTV is going to hit me up to have my own show where I just walk through people's houses and judge them. It's going to be called Ick. It's going to be great. Ick. <laughs> just point to things and go, Ick. Uh... What if you have a prison in your basement? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Uh... <laughs> uh, but we went through the, the neighborhoods. I judged the houses. It had really cool views. You can check out our soon to be travel instagram for those pictures and Ooh. videos after the walk we went to, to get coffee at this super cool blue bottle that austin helped build that's true he helped build a blue bottle and it was super cool to see something that he worked on because i don't get to see anything in person i just get to see the drawings mm -hmm. um and after that well actually before and after that we went to a fun little farmer's market where austin got yelled at by an old lady for paying one of the vendors oh my god literally for paying uh, all so, in all farmer's market in coronavirus times meant that all of the stalls had caution tape up in front of them so you couldn't just go and touch things but in order to pay the five dollars to purchase some delicious hummus that we got from this greek vendor i had to go under the caution tape to pay the money and then on my way back out this woman was like you know you're not supposed to cross the line and i'm like i uh, well how was he I felt the need to, to explain himself and i was like I mind do. your business karen <laughs> how else is he gonna pay the woman i appreciate you defending me on that <laughs> i mean like not in the moment because i was like oh ugh, confrontation but after the fact ooh, i was ugh. like you know you could have just told her to mind her business i yeah, <laughs> mind your business, Karen, and walk away. <laughs> if only I were that quick. Oh, well. All uh, in all, though, we had a pretty good weekend, in, yeah. in my opinion. And then the week? How was the week? Yeah. Uh, weekend good, week not so good? Super long. Um, I've been doing a whole lot of training and working out and not a whole lot of anything else. And I've also been having the worst dietary digestive issues of my life i had to do an at-home food sensitivity slash allergy <laughs> test and i i got to stab Kristen. <laughs> context i got to <laughs> use the little spring-loaded needle and prick Kristen's ring finger th this ring finger for those of you watching and then i had to milk the blood still hurts out of her sorry i had to <laughs> basically squeeze her finger to get blood to drip onto this absorbent paper and then she's gonna mail that back into whatever place and they're gonna tell her what foods she's uh should not be eating which is all of them mm -hmm. it was a horrible experience <laughs> and i cried 
But we made it. You made it. I did the terrible. I'm the crook in this scenario. I saved one of the needles so that you can stab yourself. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it on air. I'll do it as part of a bonus episode. No? <laughs> Let us know if that's something you want to see <laughs> me stab myself on air. I didn't even watch him stab me, so. Are we okay? Are you okay? I'm good. Okay. Now. Well, my work week was also pretty standard. It kind of dragged and... I got more thrown on my plate, but I cannot complain because I am very thankful that I have a job in the midst of the pandemic. Speaking of so... having a job. Oh, yeah. I signed my full-time post-graduation <gasps> offer at the law firm that I worked at this summer, and I'm simultaneously super excited, really scared, really stressed, but also relieved. So, yay, congrats, Kristen. It was a roller coaster and of an experience for me. Th- there's time. Well, I've been telling you. There's time to be stressed later. You can tell me all you want. I'm going to be stressed all the time. Well. <laughs> you want to talk about... Oh, yeah. I Okay. I have an update that we're going to do. Th- our Court of Appeals, as it were. It's a Spider-Man update, guys. Because on the Good Mythical Morning discontinued snack video from last Wednesday, Link said that Tobey Maguire is the second best Spider-Man with Tom Holland in the lead, as to be expected. But ha! Toby isn't in last. And that's all I have to say. But Link said it. Basically rubbing it rubbing it in the face of Anna. So take Don't that, Don't worry, Anna. It would be much more reputable if Rhett had said it, because Rhett and I are more alike. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> also, Rhett and Link are old and grew up with old ass Spider-Man. They're both wiser than I am. So what candle are we burning today, <laughs> Kristen? <laughs> Do you want to light it? I don't know how to work a lighter. No, well, I'll light it. What? You just asked me if I want to light it. <laughs> and then you were like, well, I'll light it. What the heck? I mean, should I be trusted with fire? That is no, the question. No, or sharp objects. You've trusted me with fire every episode before. Uh, we are burning <laughs> our Dalmatian Jasper candle from Jax Kelly. Not a sponsor. But, but we're I'm determined. I'm super determined because they commented on one of our photos. Two of our Instagram posts. Probably because I tagged them in those posts, but I, I mean no, they're totally they they're know our way. that I exist. Kind of. I'll buy your products if you sponsor me. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Why not? Well, according to freecrystals.com, Dalmatian Jasper reconnects us with our playful nature. It balances yin and yang and aligns the physical, emotional, and mental bodies with the etheric realm. I've been to that realm. It is helpful in overcoming depression, nightmares, and negative thinking. Dalmatian Jasper is of particular use when feeling stuck in life. It helps to transform outworn thinking patterns or overanalyzing to enable one to move forward in life with composure. It has also been used to calm, train, and communicate with animals. That's cool. I didn't know that when we first got it. Neither did I, but now I do, so I'm going to use it with my children. Heck yeah. You can use this and maybe Pippin will like you. Ooh. And the affirmation that goes with Dalmatian Jasper is, I go with the flow of the universe knowing that I'm protected. I go with the flow with, of the universe knowing that I am protected. Namaste, bitches. <laughs> Fire. Candle. Yeah. yeah! We got a candle lit. I'm ready. Alright. Before we begin, we have our disclaimer to say... This is an intentionally argumentative podcast. We choose to take opposing sides of an argument for the sake of entertainment. Whether or not our personal values align with it, the Court of Public Opinion podcast and its hosts do not necessarily endorse the views expressed in this program, as we learned last week. Please do not pass judgment on our individual character based on our arguments. We're just here to have a good time yelling at each other over silly debate topics. And now that that's out of the way, what are we arguing, Kristen? Well, Peanuts, as we said last week, neither myself nor Austin can consume dairy products. Austin gets the lava poo, and I go straight to death. (laughs) So in honor of World Plant Milk Day, we will be discussing the different non-dairy milk alternatives and vouching for our favorites. To see us try each individual milk substitute and comment on the experience, you can head over to our Patreon for a fun bonus video. Yum yum! Where did this argument originate, you may ask? Well, (laughs) milk is considered 
an important staple in most people's diets, i.e., the nation's largest ad campaign in history, starting in 1993, got milk! Milk builds strong bones, however, many people have chosen not to consume milk from cows for a variety of reasons, including allergies, intolerances, like the two of us, uh, diets, and for personal reasons. There is an ever-growing list of possible milk substitutes, and people often ask which is the best one, or which one is the most similar tasting to cow's milk. So we set out to settle this once and for all. We're going to break down each of nine different dairy substitutes. All right. I'm going to start with oat milk. This one is very trendy and popular right now. All right, guys. Oat milk is derived from whole oat grains by extracting the plant material with water. Love and Lemons has an oat milk recipe, which is guaranteed to come out smooth and creamy every time. Perfect for adding to coffee, baking recipes, and more. Not a sponsor, but it sounds cool, and she says you can make it at home, so try it. I want to try it. Let's try it. Anyway. <laughs> I'm open to all the things. We're just going to make all of our own milk from now on. Safe. How to make oat milk. Step one. Blend. Add oats and filtered water to a powerful blender and blend for 30 seconds. Exactly. Until the water looks creamy and white. Do not over blend. It's very important. Step two. Strain. Place a fine mesh strainer over a large bowl and pour the milk through it. Do not. Do not. Try to press the oat pulp to get more liquid through the strainer. It will make the milk slimy and gritty. Don't do it. Step three. Strain again. This is an optional step, but if you really want some extra smooth oat milk, you strain the liquid twice and discard the pulp both times. Step th four. I can count. Step four. Chill and enjoy. That's literally it. And it sounds so easy, but I'm skeptical. If it was that you easy. You just to blend, strain, strain, chill? Yeah. If it was that easy, why haven't I been doing it myself this whole time? Why am I paying like $5 for Chobani oat milk? I mean, how much do oats cost? You can get a whole thing of them for not that much. Huh. Well, let's try it. All right. Okay. <laughs> However, manufacturers often add extra ingredients such as gums, oils, and salt to provide a desirable taste and texture. So maybe that's why we pay for it. Oat milk is naturally sweet and mild in flavor, and it can be used in cooking the same way that cow's milk in is used, and it tastes great in cereal or smoothies. Some nutritional facts. One cup of oat milk contains 140 to 170 calories, 4.5 to 5 grams of fat, 2.5 to 5 grams of protein, and 19 to 29 grams of carbs. It's very carb heavy, but that's because it's made out of oats. Oat milk contains a similar number of calories to cow's milk, but up to double the amount of carbs and half the amount of protein and fat. Oat milk is high in fiber and beta glucan, which binds to cholesterol and reduces its absorption in the body, aka it lowers your cholesterol levels. So oat milk is cheap and easy to make at home. I got that through research, and that's what I said in the video, so like, it must be true. Two sources. Two separate sources said that oat milk is easy to make at home. I've also found that a lot of separate sources take information from one another. So, but if you research enough, and this is something they teach us in law school, if you research to the point where everything is saying the same thing and citing the same things, then you're good. As far as research goes, you are you're good. You're done, and you don't have to research anymore. So awesome. That was milk number one. Oat milk number two, almond milk. Almond milk is made by blending almonds with water. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and then straining the mixture to remove the solids. Sensing a theme. It can also be made by adding water to almond butter, which I think is basically the same process done in a different order. The first right. almond milk recipe was first discovered in a Baghdadi cookery book in the 13th century. Almond milk surpassed soy milk in U.S. sales in 2013. And, fun fact, almonds are a part of the same family as cherries, peaches, mangoes. They're all members of the Droop family. D-R-U-P-E. They're all Droops! I think I only knew that because I had a friend who's allergic to almonds and also couldn't have peaches. It's a weird fact that I... Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> milk number three... Milk number three. ...is soy milk. Soy milk, as you might have guessed, is made out of either soybeans or soy protein isolate. No. Yeah. Is it blended with water? I'll get to that. And strained? <laughs> it's often contains thickeners and vegetable oils to improve taste and consistency otherwise you're just drinking liquidized 
edamame. That doesn't sound that great. Nah. <laughs> I actually, there are a lot more steps in soy milk. So soy milk is produced by soaking and grinding soybeans, boiling the mixture, and filtering out the remaining particles. It is a stable emulsion of oil, water, and protein. Mm. So there, you have to have oil in this one, I guess. A stable emulsion. Yeah, you like that, didn't um, you? I'm, I like that, yeah. <laughs> well, the internet reveres soy milk as the best substitute for cow's milk due to its mild and creamy flavor and nutritional value. One cup of unsweetened soy milk contains 80 to 90 calories, 4 to 4.5 grams of fat, 7 to 9 grams of protein, and 4 grams of carbs. This is most close to cow's milk in the amount of protein. Note to you all. Starbucks soy milk is super sweetened. Very, very, very sweetened. It has about as much sugar as a Snickers bar. So Whoa. be fucking careful. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, my Pilates teacher cut out, like, all sugar in her diet, and, like, the only thing she kept was her soy latte from Starbucks, and she gained... She's like, what's going on? She gained a ton of weight. What's and happening? And she asked to see the, the box of soy milk or whatever it is, oh. and she read the ingredients, and there was so much sugar that she, like, she was like, that's disgusting. So, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Starbucks, but their Not almond milk is just as good. For good reason. <laughs> it's a lot of sugar in your soy milk, and it, I mean, it tastes good, but some people just really don't want sugar in their soy milk, I guess. <laughs> Please don't kill me. Soy milk is one of few of the few plant-based sources of high-quality, complete protein, which provides all the essential amino acids. These are the amino acids that can't be produced by the body and must be obtained through food slash supplements slash diets. However, and here we are with the first controversy of the day, oh, no. soy is one of the most controversial foods and people are concerned over its effects on the body one of the main effects causing concern is the amount of isoflavones i'm not a scientist so i can't pronounce these things in soy which affect the estrogen receptors in the body and the function of hormones uh, it's like an estrogen mimicking compound and it may or may not make your boobs grow make you moody i don't know it's a widely debated topic, though, and there is no conclusive evidence to suggest that moderate amounts of soy milk will cause harm to otherwise healthy adults. And lastly, with soy milk, for people with tons of food issues, soy milk is made from soybeans, which are not recommended for people with a FODMAP, F-O-D-M-A-P, intolerance or who are in the elimination phase of the low FODMAP diet. FODMAP FOD oh, sorry. Go ahead. Always cutting me what is a FODMAP? FODMAPs are a type of short chain carb naturally produced in some foods. They cause digestive issues such as gas and bloating, which are undesirable. <laughs> completely. Uh, <laughs> however, soy milk made from soy protein isolate can be consumed as an alternative to cow's milk for people like us. Just check the ingredients. Not if it's made out of yet? if it's made out of soybeans and you have a FODMAP intolerance or on a low FODMAP diet. Don't drink that soy milk, but maybe drink the one that's made out of soy protein isolate. This Next. is edutainment uh, at its finest. <laughs> what are we at? Number four, coconut milk. Mm. Coconut milk is extracted from the grated pulp or flesh Ew. of mature coconuts. Not to be confused with coconut water, which is the liquid found inside the seed surrounded by the coconut pulp flesh. <laughs> It has been popularly used as a main ingredient in many traditional Asia Pacific and East African dishes for thousands of years. And fun fact, coconuts are also members of the Droop family. And coconut water, not coconut milk, can be used as a substitute for blood plasma. We are learning so many things mm -hmm. today. I got all the fun facts. They use it in like Thai food a lot, right? With mm -hmm. like curries and stuff? Indian food? Thailand is a part of the Asia Pacific. Bitch, I'm just... I didn't research that much into it, so I will say yes. Most likely. I know they put it in curries. I was not asking. I was just confirming. Milk number five? Milk number five. Rice milk. Rice milk is made commercially by pressing the rice through a grinding mill, followed by filtration and blending in water. Rice milk may be made at home by using rice flour and brown rice protein or by boiling brown rice with a large volume of water, blending and filtering the mixture. It seems really easy. Yeah, all of these seem pretty simple. But somehow I think we would mess it up. So It's a superpower. Let's try it. <laughs> uh, as with oat milk, manufacturers often add thickeners to improve the texture and taste of rice milk. There's always going to be more stuff in there Yeah. that factories have that we don't. Yeah. 
Rice milk is the least allergenic of the non-dairy milks, making it a safe option for those with all the allergies, like me, with gluten, soy, dairy, and so on. Rice milk is also mild in taste and naturally sweet in flavor. It has a watery consistency and goes well in smoothies, desserts, and with oatmeal. One cup of rice milk contains 130 to 140 calories, 2 to 3 grams of fat, 1 gram of protein, and 27 to 38 grams of carb. Fat yikes on that one. Fat yikes. This is similar to That's calories. A lot of carbs. It, because it's rice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this it's similar to the calories containing cow's milk, but double the carbs and significantly less protein and fat. Like there's only one gram of protein in there. Was that more or less than an oat milk? Protein? No, the carbs. I'm I'm hung up on the carbs. Uh, 19 to 29. Oh, ooh, rice boy, milk has a even lot more. more. Because it's rice. Rice milk is also high on the glycemic index, the GI, which means it is absorbed quickly in the gut and rapidly raises sugar levels, which means it might not be the best option for people with diabetes. Um, mm. Really important to know. I have a propensity for that, given my family history. So... No rice milk for you. None for me, thanks. Rice milk is also very low in protein, so it's not the best option for growing children, athletes, and the elderly, because they need high protein. This is the scary part. Uh, Rice milk has also been shown to contain high levels of inorganic arsenic, which is a toxic chemical that is found naturally in the environment. Long-term exposure to this has been shown to be associated with an increased risk of various health problems, including some cancers and heart disease. Why is anybody drinking rice milk? Look, the FDA recommends people consume rice as part of a balanced diet that includes a variety of grains. Solely relying on rice and rice products is not advised, especially for infants, toddlers, and pregnant women. So please, eat a lot of grains, not just the rice kind. Get some oat milk and mix it with your rice milk. (laughs) Balance. I vaguely remember the history of, like, Buddhism, but wasn't it, like... One of the monks survived on eating a single grain of rice to reach enlightenment. Is that a thing? It was just one grain, though. Oh, so it's in moderation. Yeah. But it was only rice. Yeah. Eat rice in moderation. I mean, one grain is far less than moderation, but... Yes. So, but please don't try to survive on one grain of rice. That sounds very unhealthy. Just eat, eat rice, have some rice milk, but don't have it all the time. And make sure you eat lots of grains. Like the oats and the wheats, if you can, which I cannot. Needless to say, rice milk is probably not going to be in the finalists of this debate. No, because I'm kind of afraid of rice milk now, but (laughs) that's okay. All right. Milk number six. (laughs) Cashew milk. Cashew milk is made by, (laughs) you guessed it, blending cashews in water and putting it through a cheesecloth or a nut milk cloth. Because we can't have cheese. (laughs) Because we can't have cheese. (laughs) Different recipes that I found differ on the cashew to water ratio, but if you're looking to make your own, there are a lot of recipes available online. Same with all of these milks. So yeah, give yourself some excitement in the kitchen. Yeah. (laughs) If you're looking to spice up the kitchen life, go ahead and look up some nut milk recipes. My family is listening you to You and this. your significant other could spend some time spicing up the kitchen with your nut milk recipe. Anyway. Ricky, turn off, turn, turn <laughs> off the podcast. <laughs> the cashew tree is, a na- is native to northeastern Brazil and made its way to India via Portuguese sailors between the years 1560 and 1565. Your people! My people! (laughs) For those of you who don't know, I'm a quarter Portuguese. Oh. (laughs) This is why I can tan. Oh, boy, white boy. And fun fact, cashew nuts actually grow from the bottom of these these mysterious fruits called cashew apples, (laughs) which kind of look like bell peppers with short, girthy dicks. (laughs) Honestly... And don't be perturbed by that description. You got to go Google Im- Google image search cashew fruit. It, they're weird. They look freaking weird. But 10 out of 10 would recommend. While on the tree, cashew nuts are surrounded by a double shell that contains a potent poison called anacardic acid. Which, like poison oak and poison ivy, causes an aggressive allergic skin rash. 
But don't worry, commercially sold cashews and milked cashews are dried and roasted beforehand, which gets rid of all the toxic oils. And we're just supposed to trust that they can get rid of them all? I, I think so. I would trust a cashew over a rice. A rice, yes. Just one. Just one. <laughs> just the one grain. This food is scary, dude. I mean, there's like mercury in everything. Right? There's, there's mercury in the air that we breathe. Shh. But if we fear everything, then we go through life being anxious all the time. I we already just have do that. to accept that. Well, why add to it, right? I feel like I'm at optimum. <laughs> You've plateaued. I'm what? still not going to be drinking rice milk no. anytime soon. Oh, wait. Yes, I am. <laughs> anyway. Oh, good. Milk number seven. <laughs> yes. Macadamia milk. Do you know what it's made out of? Uh, can I guess? I think you can. Yeah. Is it macadamia nuts and water? Yeah. Oh, my God. But macadamia milk is made of mostly water and about 3% macadamia nuts. Mm, that's not that much. Nope. It's also fairly new to the market, and most brands are made in Australia using Australian macadamias. Shout out to Australia. We got... Thanks. And Chris Evans is listening. Hemsworth. Oh, Chris Hemsworth is listening. So he's probably making uh, some macadamia milk, right? Right? Right, Chris? Right? Chris Evans, if you're <laughs> listening. I'm sorry. I, I, I flubbed. Me. I love you. Don't tell Austin. <laughs> macadamia nut... <laughs> he knows. <laughs> That's my hall pass, by the way. <laughs> macadamia nut milk is you is made, not used, but made by soaking the macadamia nuts for one to two hours if you want to make it at home, and then blending them with water. Mm, I guessed right. <laughs> well, you can blend with water, salt, and any flavorings you want. Like if you want chocolate macadamia milk, you put cocoa powder in it. Wow. Uh, then you strain it and enjoy it. So that apparently is very easy to make at home, too. But I, I'm still pretty skeptical about it. Are we going to try all of these? Yeah. I'd be down to make some macadamia cocoa milk. That mm. it does sound good, doesn't Ooh, it? Yeah. One cup of macadamia milk contains 50 to 55 calories, which is super low. Uh, four and a half to five grams of fat, one to five grams of protein, and one gram of carbs. It contains one third of the calories and about half the fat of cow's milk. It also is slightly lower in protein and carbs, but the low carb part of it makes it a great option for those who are trying to reduce the amount of carbs in their diet. So people with diabetes who are looking to reduce carb intake, diabetes. this is a suitable option. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most important things about macadamia milk is that it's a great source of healthy monosaturated, monounsaturated fats with 3.8 grams per cup. This increasing your intake of monounsaturated fats may help reduce blood cholesterol levels, blood pressure, and the risk of heart disease. Wow. This is good for you. I think we just became like a health and wellness vlog. Do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I started a yoga teaching program. Hey, other update. <laughs> so take my yoga classes. When um, you're certified, right? Yeah, I'm not certified yet. I have to finish the class. But you can be my guinea pigs, like Austin. You want to talk about your next milk. Milk no. number eight. Woo! Hemp milk. Mm -hmm. Now, hemp milk is interesting. Hemp milk is actually just stoner urine. So it's no surprise that it isn't the most popular milk substitute. Ha! <laughs> JK! JK! Hemp milk is unsurprisingly made by blending water with the seeds of the hemp plant, also known as cannabis sativa. Hemp milk does not, however, produce any mind-altering effects like marijuana and only contains trace amounts of tetrahydrocannabinol, THC for short. Fun fact, Kristen had a friend in middle school named Sativa. I did. And we I just saw her post on Facebook, so... Fresh on the mind. <laughs> Another fun fact is that the majority of fun facts about hemp were with respect to the marijuana industry. But I did find one about hemp seeds containing gamma linolenic, linolenic acid, GLA, which is a compound that's also found in human breast milk. Oh, all right. It, does that have any health benefits? There you go. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> I'm sure it does. I'm sure it's important. Babies drink it. So babies, get your hemp. Milk number nine. Ah, yes. We got the pea milk. 
Pea milk is not urine. Pea milk is a type of plant milk made using pea protein. Not like pea, but like pea. <laughs> I got you. Pea protein is made out of yellow peas, and that's really <laughs> not helping my case at all. Don't drink the yellow milk. It's not yellow. The pea milk. Pea, pea milk is made by soaking yellow peas and blending it with water. He's, he's losing it. Uh, commercial pea milk products come in sweetened, oh. unsweetened vanilla and chocolate flavors and are usually enriched with vitamins. Pea milk is often marketed as a more environmentally friendly alternative to almond milk and a non-GMO alternative to soy milk. So the pea milk industry is already competing with two other milk alternatives as well as the cow milk. They're just kind of throwing them under the bus. But it tastes and looks like urine, so. I haven't tasted it yet. This guy. Also true. <laughs> I'm choosing to believe that before. That before way I... he'll be pleasantly surprised, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah. Set your expectations super, super low. So when something's mediocre, you're like, oh, okay. That's what I did with Austin. It's what I do with everything. Oh. One cup of pea milk has 70 calories, 8 grams of protein, zero carbs. Oh, my. Zero. <laughs> None at all. No carbs. Uh, four and a half grams of fat and 45% of the recommended daily intake of calcium, which is crazy. Crazy. It's from peas. Gross. We don't know yet. I'm not a fan of peas is the thing. C continue. Pea Please. milk is revered as being a great source of plant-based protein. Pea milk is also a hypoallergenic dairy-free alternative. This is especially important because all of the other alternatives we talked to to this point has either been nut or soy, which triggers other allergies. And some of them might have gluten in them. Peas don't have gluten. Pea milk is lactose, soy, nut, and gluten-free, making it a safe choice for those with allergies and intolerances. Pea milk is low in calories, but is comparable to cow's milk in creaminess and richness. Many commercial pea milk brands combine their peas with other ingredients like water and sunflower oil to give it an optimal texture. This results in smooth liquid that can be easily added to a variety of dishes like oatmeal smoothies and coffee yum yum cultivating peas is also much more environmentally friendly than almonds and cows it takes 86 percent less greenhouse gas emissions to make pea milk than almond milk also cow's milk requires 25 times more water to produce than pea milk i mean and you can just put a cup under a cow and that's the pea milk I'm going to stop. <laughs> it's, it's just getting worse and worse. real tired of your shit today. But something to look out for with pea milk is that they tend to have a lot of additives. So just be careful when selecting your brand and read your diet, your what nutrition, nutrition label. Nutrition facts. And now that we've laid out all nine of these milks, we have all nine of these milks here with us in the studio, in my bedroom, <laughs> in the courtroom. So if you want to see us taste and compare all of these milks you can go ahead and join the court of public opinion podcast jury at patreon.com slash c-o-p-o-p-o-d and check out our first patron only video let's get to it and we're back we've just tried all of them milks all the milks and now that we've tasted them all we can uh once again please go check out our patreon for that video of us tasting them and uh we're gonna move on into our arguments we've narrowed it down to two milks we liked the macadamia nut milk and the almond milk the most can i go first oh yeah absolutely okay yeah here's the timer okay we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten minutes on the clock you ready kristen you ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Three. Are you ready? Two. One. <laughs> Good day, your honors, and may it please the court. Kristen Bradley on behalf of Macadamia Milk. All right, guys. Some criteria for my choice of non-dairy milk. Taste. This is an arguably the most important factor for me because it should taste good. Why would I put something gross in my body? Like, I'm not ever going to have coconut milk again. Ick. Mm. Gross. Added sugar. A lot of milk alternatives add sugar to enhance the flavor or texture of their alternative milk. I'm not a big fan of added sugars and unnatural sweeteners because they make me all bloaty and feel ick. Additives. Some non-dairy milks may contain a lot of additives like pea milk um, and those modify taste and texture. So additives aren't, unne aren't necessarily unhealthy, but I prefer to avoid putting things in my body that I cannot pronounce. 
And dietary needs are super important for me because I have a shit ton of allergies. So I need to avoid a bunch of things, hence the whole milk alternative thing. So I have to look at product labels a lot closer and this is just in case there's like a sneaky ingredient that will kill me in there. And then calcium content because dairy milk is rich in calcium. I'm missing a lot of that by not being able to have it. So short of taking a vitamin, I need an alternative that will give me some calcium. And lastly and least importantly to me is cost. Uh, see my necessity for good taste. <laughs> uh, but I would rather not spend a whole arm and a leg on milk alternatives compared to the standard price of milk, at least. I will give you an arm and half a leg for that. So, yeah. I'll take it. Cool. According to my criteria and internet reviews, to be honest, macadamia nut milk is the best milk alternative. And here's why. Taste. First. It tastes amazing. And if you watch our Patreon video, you will watch me light up with all of the reactions. Amazing it tastes. It's naturally sweet, so you don't have to really add anything to it. It's creamier than all the other milks because raw macadamia nut milks have a naturally creamy texture, so they make a pretty surprisingly milky milk alternative. It also tastes good on its own, which is not something that can be said for a lot of other non-dairy milks like soy milk. Not to call you out, but it's kind of gross by itself. It doesn't have a strong, distinctively macadamia taste. Generally, other non-dairy milks taste like what they are. Coconut milk tastes like coconuts, kind Ugh. of, not really. Or you can taste the edamame in soy milk sometimes. It's so bad. Um, the coconut. Anyway. Austin can taste the pea and pea milk. <laughs> really? I'm not a pea guy. I'm not a fan of peas. <laughs> you can just take the penis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They'll see the video. Will they? If they pay $5. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, macadamia milk is similar to cow's milk, but not too similar. Also, despite its high water to macadamia nut ratio, it doesn't taste distinctively like water, like coconut milk does. And the texture isn't too watery. It's just a very well-rounded milk alternative, so I like it. Macadamia nut milk is also really good for lattes. I know you can't tell by looking at me, but I'm a pretty basic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good latte and from what i remember about regular milk forgive me it's been a while since i've been able to drink that without fucking dying but it had a creamy consistency which is good for lattes you're looking for a smooth creamy and like frothy liquid for your lattes to act as to act as the milk so that it cuts the espresso again forgive me for my shitty adjectives i'm not a fucking barista <laughs> or a thesaurus but you get the point. The milk you choose for your latte has to have the right texture or it's just not going to taste right. And macadamia nut milk has that texture. <laughs> macadamia nut milk in a latte adds a subtle, buttery, nutty flavor that results in the perfect, deliciously rich coffee drink. That's right. I said it. Have you had macadamia nut milk in a latte? Yeah, and so has the internet. Shut your mouth. What I'm getting at is that macadamia nut milk mimics the smooth and creamy taste of cow's milk, making it the perfect alternative for your lattes. Shout out to the rest of you basic bitches. I know that you are <laughs> thinking about that. Next is nutritional value. Macadamia nut milk is naturally sugar-free too and only contains 50 to 55 calories per serving. Unsweetened macadamia nut milk has no sugar, making it tick my added sugar box. But for those of you who don't care as much, which is totally understandable. The original version of the leading brand of macadamia nut milk called Milkadamia, see our Patreon video, contains only six grams of sugar, which is still pretty low. Uh, and similarly, sim similarly to dairy milk, each serving of macadamia nut milk is packed with vitamin D and it even contains 50% more calcium than a glass of dairy milk. Calcium box? Check. Check. <laughs> Further, macadamia nut milk at least the milkadamia I have purchased, is vegan-friendly, GMO-free, gluten-free, and keto-friendly, which is not a concern for me, but shout out to all you keto folks looking for milk alternatives. I see y'all. Uh, so it's perfect for people on a low-carb diet who are looking for a new dairy alternative to add to their diet. Stop making fun of me. Macadamia nut milk- I'm just trying to do something interesting for the, for the YouTube watchers. But I'm also just an antsy person. Eating my I have time. time sitting He's still. eating oh. my time. Magnamia nut milk is also high in monounsaturated fat, which, according to the American Heart Association, can lower your risk of heart disease and stroke when added to your diet. So add that. <laughs> Speaking of adding things, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Additives. 
Austin's go-to almond milk brand is the Sprouts kind, the Sprouts unsweetened organic almond milk thing. And the ingredients are as follows, not to single you out, but it's there. Dang. So it's made of almond milk, in parentheses, filtered water, comma, almonds. And just so you know, <laughs> food labels in the United States go by content, like how much of something is in it. So there's more water than almond milk, or, or almonds is what I'm getting at here. Next is tricalcium phosphate sea salt, gelin gum, dipotassium phosphate, xanthan gum, sunflower lectin, vitamin A palmitate, vitamin D2, D-alpha, <laughs> tocopherol, and natural, oh, what well, in parentheses, it's natural vitamin E. I don't know why I didn't just read that. <laughs> My go-to macadamia nut milk mm. is milkadamia. The ingredients are as follows. Mil macadamia nut milk, which is filtered water, or blah, blah, filtered water and macadamias. More water. Macadamia oil. Calcium phosphate pea protein, which is interesting because you didn't like the pea milk, but you liked the macadamia nut milk. Sunflower oh, lecithin? How do you pronounce lecithin? I've said lectin my entire life, and now lectin my life. sounds right. My life is a fucking lie. <laughs> Locust bean gum, bean gum, sea salt, gel and gum, vitamin A palmitate, vitamin B2, and vitamin B12. They both have additives. The difference, I can pronounce almost L nope. everything <laughs> in macadamia nut milk. I, because I've been saying lectin my entire life, that my mm. entire life is a lie. And I know what most of it is. I also know that macadamia nut milk from Milkadamia is certified gluten-free. More on that later. This is super important to me, and if you try to cut me off while I'm saying it, I will kill you. No pressure. 90 seconds remaining. It's really hard not to punch you in your stupid face sometimes. The environmental impact of macadamia milk is super important macadamia nuts are also cultivated using low impact farming methods as discussed earlier in the facts section most of the macadamia nut milks are produced in australia and an article from food ingredients first titled conscious indulgence highly sustainable macadamia nut market forecast for growth the author and a macadamia nut farmer discussed the sustainability of both macadamia nut trees and farming techniques to cultivate the nuts most notably, the macadamia tree has the ability to adapt to a changing climate. This is largely due to the fact that the tree inherently optimizes water and sequesters carbon from the atmosphere. The tree's internal water management system shuts down the tree's stom stomatal, stomatal pores during times of low moisture, which makes the tree resilient particularly in a drought. The tree's ability to conserve water within itself allows growers to adopt smarter, more efficient irrigation schedules and water management. Shit. Damn, Ad you went deep. <laughs> Additionally, it was shown that the average Australian macadamia orchard was shown to remove more than 17 gross metric tons and 14 and a half net metric tons of carbon per heck. I can never say this correctly. Hectare. Hecator. Hecator. <laughs> Per year from the atmosphere. Oh. I'm continuing. Right. This I'll is very you. important. I'll give you. You've got all the time. A macadamia nut I'm tree. Fascinated, so. This is super important, and I also fell down a rabbit hole because this is really interesting. I'm learning things. A macadamia nut tree's size, volume of foliage, and long lifespan mean that every tree can hold a substantial amount of carbon, more than most other crops. Farmers also seek to minimize their carbon footprint while cultivating the macadamia nut trees by minimizing the use the use of heavy diesel consuming machinery and transportation. Even further, which I know is hard to believe, but bear with me here, macadamia growers ensure that every part of the tree and nut is either used or recycled. That means nothing goes to a landfill. Nothing. Magnamia shells are used to generate electricity or made into stock feed, and any organic matter, for example, branches or foliage, are returned to the earth beneath the tree to be reabsorbed by the soil from which they originally grew. This is mind-blowing. Like, literally every other industry is so wasteful. I love this. I, I really love this. And mad respect for the macadamia growers out there in Australia. I see y'all. Is that every company that does it that way? Or is it just from what it, whatever article they or were, source you got this from? They researched all of, like, the Australian macadamia orchards, which is where most of our macadamia nuts come from. Mm -hmm. And these were, like, the average numbers. Oh. And they talked to one of the farmers to see how they 
pulled that off because that's like get, getting rid of four, 17 gross metric tons and 14 and a half gross metric tons of carbon per hectare 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 h-e-c-t-a-r-e hectare hectare mm-hmm sure that's what it is and that australian farmer was just like because we're not fucking america they are not irish well <laughs> sorry australian people i can't do an accent although i wish i could because i like a good australian accent i can say see you later see you later Rise of blades. Rise of blades. <laughs> America. My nope. last. Please let me finish my last. <laughs> okay. Okay. The last thing on my list is price. And again, I do not care much about price. If I'm paying for something that won't kill me. Speaking of which, guys, y'all, everybody in the universe, I just found out that Sprouts brand almond milk is not gluten free, aka we have been using that. For a long ass period of time and i've been getting sick for a long ass period of time and here i was thinking almond milk is gluten free but not the sprouts brand my whole life is a fucking lie where is the gluten coming I from no well now that i know this cheaper non-dairy alternative has been causing me enormous amounts of pain i'm team magnamia all the fucking way and mic drop my argument is over thank he you has been trying to kill me thank you for your input Kristen. i do appreciate that my input <laughs> you've been trying to kill me <laughs> <laughs> it's uh you know don't worry about it i'm really impressed that you were able to keep your mouth shut for almost 10 minutes i'm sorry what <laughs> i i'm no am... longer impressed and i'm annoyed i'm working on it give me the timer here you go. There's ten minutes. Three. Two. One. Go. Good day, your honors, and may it please the court. Austin Andrade on behalf of Almond Milk being the best dairy-free milk substitute. My argument will share the similar criteria to Kristen's. So taste, added sugars, additives, dietary needs, calcium content, and cost may or may not be included. Uh, <laughs> let's start with taste. You know... After after we tried all of them, I still think that almond milk is the best non-dairy milk by taste. It had nuttier... Hmm. I wish I could riff better. The plan was to riff on flavor, and I didn't write anything down. I'm a good arguer. Tasted That's what like this podcast almonds. is all about. Almond milk tastes like almonds, and it was sweeter. Maybe. Maybe not. Mm, no. <laughs> it was almond deer, which is a plus for some reason, and it is the go-to that we've always bought. Anyway. And almost killed me with. You're here, aren't you? I have a rash growing on my face because we tasted it in the video. Nutritional value. With only 39 calories for every 240 milliliters, that's one cup of almond milk, it is one of the lowest calorie nut milks available and is a perfect option for anyone trying to lower their caloric intake. It is also a natural source of vitamin E, which is an antioxidant which protects cells in your body from damage caused by free radicals. Free radicals are highly reactive compounds formed when our bodies convert food into energy that can hurt our cells by stealing their electrons. This process is known as oxidation. So when you think of an antioxidant in a food and you've ever wondered well what's an antioxidant now you know why and why it's important so there you go macadamia milk has a much higher fat content at five grams per cup compared to almond milk which is only three grams per cup how much monounsaturated <clears throat> fat does almond milk have three grams nope no nope has no health benefits as far as lowering cholesterol and preventing heart those are health benefits Almond milk doesn't have those things. Oh. Macadamia nut milk does. <laughs> Glossing over. Added <laughs> sugars. Uh, this varies wildly between different brands and depends on added flavors or sweetened or unsweetened because, yeah, but they also make those taste better if they do have the sugars. It, and all the unsweetened ones that we had earlier were the most disgusting ones. But according to the same article from MIC or Mike or Mick.com, that uh, we were both looking at. Is that correct? 
uh, which nut milk is right for you, both macadamia and almond milk both have zero grams of added sugar. Uh, yep. Additives. Unlike milkadamia, almond milk does not contain additives in their ingredients, which is a lie. Because she just called me out on all that shit. Uh, because I didn't realize the brand that I was drinking had all of those things. So and I tried to kill brand. me. Well, maybe we'll try something other than Sprouts brand almond milk. Apparently, Silk's Almond Breeze. I think at this point we can tell who's winning this argument. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Uh, let's see. Macadamia milk also tends to need to be fortified with additional protein and vitamins, while almond milk, in a lot of cases, aside from the Sprouts brand that I drink, does not. Dietary needs. Almond milk is a good substitute to regular milk for people who have diabetes. It is high in fat and protein relative to its carbohydrate content, meaning that it won't cause a spike in blood sugar levels. It can also reduce a person's risk of heart disease because they are high in quality, healthy, monounsaturated fats. Is that also a lie? I'm sorry, did you take that from my argument? Because that's not true. <laughs> I'm sucking at this. <laughs> Calcium content. <laughs> Almond milk has 45% of your daily value calcium content compared to macadamia nut milk's 50%, which is a very minimal difference. They are both good at building strong bones. So my argument in favor of <laughs> <almond> <laughs> <milk> <laughs> for that one is that they're comparable. Fight for your choice. Oh, tell doing... me why tell me why almond milk I is better. I like it more. Okay? Why? Cuz it tastes gooder. <laughs> no. You know what? This is the kicker, okay? Okay? <laughs> here is why macadamia nut really falls short of almond milk almond milk just trump macadamia nut prices in almost every market trump hands thank you at sprouts 32 ounces of sprouts brand almond milk which we have now decided is not good to have that milk's only 199 while milkadamia is double that at three ninety nine for the same thirty two ounce portion, who wants to spend twice as much milk? Twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to spend twice as much money for a milk that has basically the same nutritional benefits and is not as widely available? Almond milk is the standard when it comes to everyday consumption of non dairy milks, and in coffee, its texture and taste are perfectly blended. Most, if not all, coffee shops offer almond milk as a creamer substitute option but i have only ever heard of macadamia nut milk uh being served in coffee today from her so she could be lying probably no yeah mm -hmm. they had it at konaloa by my house the starbucks have it I who cares what <laughs> starbucks has uh almond milk is better period hashtag california grown hashtag u.s made hashtag patriotism let's talk about california grown are you ready <laughs> are you ready how do i stop this are you guys ready to learn why almond milk you shouldn't it's not vegan okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> it kills so many bees oh my god it kills so many bees <laughs> there's this little infographic we have in front it's of gonna us be on the instagram right now and basically the environment is very important to me the earth is where we live and we need to start taking better care of it starting with eating less cows <laughs> and eating less almonds for the love of god people water the water use for almond production is so fucking high the problem with almond milk is that it's produced in california where drought potential is high 80 percent of almonds this is a varied statistic but 80 percent seems the most reputable to us so we went with 80 um 80 percent of almonds are grown in california Water in California is scarce. We are perpetually in a drought. We have no water. Therefore, it causes more environmental stress than other nut trees that can be grown in other places. The state of California uses an average of 3.2 gallons, or 12 liters, of water to produce just one almond kernel. Shut up. One. No. No, that's bad. I have this other article open, though. From 2017. <laughs> Does that mean it's not you good? It's been three years. Well, okay, but you also used your, your whole B thing from that same article. That hasn't changed. That's how, common knowledge. How do you know? 
We Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Macadamia nuts use 1,086 gallons of water to produce a pound of macadamia nuts. As opposed to... 1,929 gallons of water used to produce a pound of shelled or peeled almonds, which is almost twice as much. I'm going to continue. Eep. What else did you say that annoyed me? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Oh, 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 this. Who wants I said to a lot of stupid shit. Who wants now? to spend twice as much on a milk alternative that has the same health benefits? Your fucking almond milk almost killed me. <laughs> That's why. Also, knowing that the Australians take much better care of this earth and that we have to get our macadamia nuts from them, uh, I'm totally fine paying that premium because the earth means a lot to me. Okay? So many store-bought store brands of almond milk pack their products with additives and sweeteners. Almond milk is also so much harder to make at home. You have to, like, squeeze the thing. Um, squeeze your milk bag. If I want a quality almond milk... Without the additives and sugars, I have to get an artisan... This is annoying, by the way. I have to get an artisan jug at the farmer's market, and those go for, like, $10 per bottle. And it's not a large bottle. It's, like, one of those little dinky, old-fashioned milk bottles that the milkman used to drop off at your house. You know the kind. I know They're, the like, ones. that big. And I have actually, like, bought these before because I was desperate, and I would read the label and not know what any the words meant so i would go to these stupid farmers markets and buy these stupid little bottles of almond milk and my freaking wallet hurts and so does my entire body <laughs> but i just don't want to be itchy every time i have almond milk that's absolutely fair and i feel really bad for giving you almond milk that made you itchy it's fine almond milk lacks protein vitamins minerals and fatty acids you have to look for fortified almond milk Ugh. That's just... <laughs> Almonds are not vegan. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> the end of that. End of story. Uh, my only rebuttal for almond milk is that according to Almond.com's 2019 Almond Almanac, which is fun to say, over the past two decades, almond farmers have successfully reduced the amount of water needed to grow a pound of almonds by 33% via improved production practices and adoption of micro-irrigation technology and... The California almond community is committing to reduce the amount of water used to grow a pound of almonds by an additional 20% by 2025. This is such... This is the slowest pro... If they reduced it by 33%. Then it used to be a lot worse. Holy mother of God, it's going to take them... We should just stop eating almonds. And cows. I mean, I'm probably going to buy almond milk less. Now that you know podcast. it hurts me. Well, especially that, because if we're, <laughs> yeah, if we're making things together, I think normally I put the almond milk in something, though, rather than drinking it straight, like our vegan mac and cheese, where we do cauliflower noodles, and then instead of doing milk and butter, we'll do vegetable oil spread and almond milk, which okay. is going to change now to a different milk. Macadamia milk. Milkadamia. Yay. I'm done with my argument. I'm done with mine, because mine was fucking terrible. I win. She is the winner. Let's go ahead and... Ooh, that's the verdict, folks. But just because you've heard what we have to say doesn't mean there aren't some other experts who have opinions on the subject. So let's all move on down to our expert opinions. Mm, 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 mm. Expert opinions. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> Every time. All right. <sighs> you guys got to see the dance this time. It <laughs> yeah. wasn't just me watching it. Lucy Goosey. All right. FYI, <laughs> you. everybody. Macadamia nut milk ranked number one on verywellfit.com's The Nine Best Non-Dairy Milks of 2020 article, which was based on consumer reviews of leading non-dairy milk products on the internet. The article cited macadamia nut milks creamy texture and health benefits as main reasons the alternative seems to have picked up quite the following and it picked up one more follower today your turn my turn we looked at an article more like Kristen looked at an article <laughs> uh named best and worst nut milks how to choose the right almond milk parentheses plus other milk alternatives <laughs> and get this this article was written by a dr hard dick Dr. B.J. Harddick. 
I'm not making this up. Dr. B.J. Harddick is a doctor of chiropractic and an internationally recognized natural health author and speaker. His health journey begins as a child. Alternative medicine is the only medicine he has ever known. That's not very trustworthy. <laughs> In 2009, he authored his first book, Maximize Living Nutrition Plans. In 2018, he authored his second book, Align Your Health. An energizing and passionate speaker, Dr. Harddick, shares his lifestyle methods to numerous professional and public audiences every year in the United States and Canada. Dr. Harddick is sharing his hard dick with people all across the Northern Americas. That's not part of the quote. Uh, getting back to it. His teachings encompass the principles of ancestral nutrition, detoxification, functional fitness, and mindfulness. Oh, and green living. Y'all. <laughs> Go visit. Dr. BJ Harddick. No. <laughs> DrHardick.com. Give it a look. I. He's gonna be giving you something. I read through the whole. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I read through the whole article and he added nothing to my research experience. So. You're making me question if I should continue going to my chiropractor. Your chiropractor. Is, it's a soft science. Is is fine. Okay. I like my chiropractor. He's a cool dude. Next up, we watched <laughs> the Good Mythical Morning Blind Nut Milk Taste Test. <laughs> We sure did. I was laughing at my face. <laughs> Sorry. They seem to like most of the nut milks, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for comments on their YouTube video. I've got a comment from Winston Hilborg. Winston. Not Winston. Winston. Are you making fun of his name? Winston. No, I have to say it with the accent, otherwise people are going to make fun of it. He's a Winston. Winston Hilborg. Winston Hilborg says the word nut. Wait, can you say it in that accent? Winston Hilborg says, the word nut was used 139 times. <laughs> he counted. He counted. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> that was great. Was he mad about it? You made it sound like he was mad about it, but I think that was just... What like... person in that accent is not mad? The word nut was used 139 <laughs> times. <laughs> What I think was impressive about Winston is that he counted, and it was a pretty yeah. long video, and we were laughing the whole time. So he yeah, kept I don't his have time to count, Winston. I he gotta... kept his focus throughout that video. They were literally piercing it with something they called the nut buster. <laughs> so every time they said nut, nut buster, this one. <laughs> Just go watch it. As you guys can obviously tell, we're fans of Good Mythical Morning. Uh, so if, yeah, just y y stay on this YouTube video if you're watching on YouTube. But afterwards, go check them out. This next comment comes from Tyrantix. Tyrant X. Tyrant. There's not two R's in Tyrant. So. Tyrant X. Tyrant X. And he quoted, he, she, they quoted the video. I almost just pierced my lip with my own nut buster. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I like your ret. That was good. <laughs> we'll just have Kristen do accents from now on. And the last comment? Ah, yes. This is from catcat 77 t underscore t And this is another, another quote. It says, Let me drink from your teat. Nut Milk Brian, 2017. Let me drink from your teat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've got another YouTube video that's, <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's not Good Mythical Morning, but I think just the as entertaining. were just as juicy or milky. It is the What is the Best Non-Dairy Milk Dairy-Free Taste Test by Taylor Kaiser, who looks like an actress from the Bump It commercial. Uh, her and her husband, Mr. FFF, they broke it down in their video drinking several of the non-dairy milks that we tried today. And th here's, here's the results. Here are their findings from their scientific video. Rice milk tastes a little bit like rice, but it is a strong contender, rated 4 out of 5. Pea milk tastes planty. There is a pea taste. They gave it 3 out of 5 for taste, 3 out of 5 for texture, grainy. I also don't like pea taste, so I'm with ya. But he likes to taste the peanuts. <laughs> Only the Patreon listeners will know. 
They know they don't think it's funny, but <laughs> <laughs> coconut milk tastes like coconut. They gave it four out of five stars for taste. Texture four out of five as well. Cashew milk doesn't taste like cashews, but it doesn't not taste like cashews. They gave it four and a half out of five stars. Texture five out of five. Almond milk tastes clean and plain, like milk. <laughs> Taste four out of five stars. Texture four out of five stars. Oat milk is oat colored, and tastes like oats. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Taste five out of five. Texture five out of five. So what we learned, what we learned from Taylor and her husband, Mr. FFF, is that rice tastes like rice, peas taste like peas, coconut tastes like all, co no, coconuts <laughs> taste like coconuts. Uh, cashews don't taste like cashews, but they do sort of taste like cashews. Some phenomenal research. But the video isn't the best part. The comment section in that video had some gold. So let's check it out. They had a user, Brandon Estrada, commented only a week ago, the day we're recording this, I K they were full of it when they gave almond milk a 4.5. That milk, it's nastiest liquid I've ever tasted it, and forgot when putting it with your cereal. <laughs> <laughs> quality. Quality. <laughs> it's quality commentary. I enjoyed that. But somebody had uh, to reply to <laughs> Mr. Brandon here. User Komitars also replied within that same week. I recently bought that shit just to taste it, and since then, it's been sitting in my fridge, and I don't know what to do with it. Dude, they're totally friends, and they were like, you need to bag me up on this, but, buddy. But Komatars <laughs> has a much better diction and grammar and typing ability, apparently, to that Brandon Estrada to, to replied. To him saying, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Brandon Estrada replied, burn it. <laughs> And to that, Komatars said, Estrada, hmm, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. There's going to be a guy burning his almond milk very, very soon, if it hasn't happened already. More comments from the same video. Your user Europa17 commented five months ago saying, none of them is ideal. But the funny part about this one is that Taylor Kaiser, the maker of the video, replied four months ago. You're welcome to your own opinion. <laughs> With an exclamation point. With an exclamation point. So she's very positive or she's very passive aggressive. Uh, she looks like the actress in the Bump It commercial, so I have a strong assumption towards one of those. And it is not positive. <laughs> and the last comment thread. Ooh. All right. The very top comment on this video was... Out of all eight of them. All eight. Was from a year ago. From the Silk Channel. The... The channel for the milk substitute company, Silk. They say, Oh, yeah. Thanks for trying our new oat milk. Happy face. Glad you loved it as much as we do. Julian at Silk. <laughs> he left a little signature. Thank you, Julian. And to that, Taylor Kaiser replied, The Silk Channel. You're so welcome. It's so good. Exclamation point. <laughs> and to that, we get uh, player three entering the game. <laughs> Trisha Mellowling. Taylor Kaiser, I'm very fussy. I drink lactose-free milk and still have issues my doctors aren't helping with me at all. Figuring what bother me. <laughs> to that, the maker of the video, Taylor Kaiser, replies, Trisha, my husband can't do lactose-free milk either. It has to be dairy-free kind. Not just milk without lactose. You should try one of these. Exclamation point. To that, Trisha replied, Taylor, I did try one today. I thought lactose was diary free too. <laughs> and to that, Taylor replies, Trisha, lactose free and dairy free is not the same thing. Happy face. Passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say anything too mean about Taylor, but she does sound very passive aggressive. Or maybe she's just, like, the nicest person out there and doesn't realize that, like, saying something like that with a smiley face makes it sound... She's either really passive-aggressive or really, really nice. You're a psychopath. All right. <laughs> These last expert opinions come from the Quora article. Quora.com! Shout out to my favorite platform, Quora. 
It's a core <laughs> article with the question, what is the best dairy-free milk? Elizabeth Bucken Kimmerly, a basic home cook for over 45 years. Thank you for your service, Elizabeth. <laughs> Easy. All right. <laughs> she says, if you are lactose intolerant, try goat milk. My nephew was prescribed this when he was unable to digest cow milk formulas as a baby. He grew to be six foot two inches and now has two children, so it was a healthy choice. He was prescribed goat milk? And because of that. And because of that, he became really tall and had two, and kids, had two kids. But only because of the goat milk. Not because he was gonna was probably be that already tall going already. to be tall and then had sex with a lady directly at least twice. Directly related to the goat milk. I should try some goat milk. Hundred percent. I don't really want to have two kids though, so maybe I should steer clear of goat milk. If you don't want to have kids, don't drink goat milk. No kids. This is no, just not right now. To me. Not just, I just it didn't want happen right when he was a baby. He's six foot two <laughs> and has two babies. He drank the goat milk. It didn't happen when he was a yeah. What the fuck? It all happened on one day. He grew to be six foot two and had two children right after he drank the goat milk. He could be superhuman. Maybe that's what Chris Evans had in the first Avenger film. They just he doesn't have pumped, any kids. He just pumped him full of goat milk and then they hid the kids because they were all Hydra shill undercover evil. They stole Captain America's children. Captain America has two kids out there somewhere. All because of that goat milk that they pumped into his veins convince me otherwise you're wrong <laughs> i said it so it's canon all right who's our next expert let's bring it down to pygmy p he she they say almond milk is extremely good for you whereas soy milk can have health implications in the future comma capitalized w when it comes to dairy-free milk it's good to try everything because they have different flavors so at the end of the day it's really a taste bud thing hope i helped y'all out thanks pygmy p you didn't really help us much hotly contested whether or not soy milk will make you grow boobs huh? you don't nah. drink soy milk you but had... i do have a little bit of moobage that's because of all the top ramen i ate as a middle schooler <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Last expert opinion. This one is from Anant. Anant? Anant? Sharma. It's from an ant? An ant. How did he press the keys on the keyboard? A big ant. <gasps> That's my nightmare. Ant no, thank man. you. It's only 11. This is from PM. Anant Sharma. Charm. Sharma. Sharma. This is from. The a non sharp Can you <laughs> shut your mouth? I've been up since six something because this demon woke me up and now it's 11 something and he's interrupting me while I'm trying to get through my last expert opinion. You're done, yes? Perfect. This last expert opinion comes from a non Sharma and he says, Soy boy! <laughs> taking a sip of water so i read it like that <laughs> uh, i was hoping for a spray cam oh, oh my man god i'm crying <laughs> <laughs> hey we made it we're done yeah i yep. shouldn't buy almond milk anymore <laughs> so itchy. uh honestly aside from all of the dietary and nutritional facts that we just brought up it kind of comes down to your preference of dairy-free milks. I keep on trying to think of an alternative way to say that. Oh, milk with a Y. It's milk. Milk. Milk with a Y. Milk. So, figuring out what you're looking for in your non-dairy milk, it, milk is essential to pick your favorite based on that. The less ingredients, the better, remember. If you can't pronounce it, it's probably some funky shit that you shouldn't be putting in your body, maybe, possibly. Google it. Google it. Highly processed stuff is not good for your gut, or at least not for good for Kristen's gut. And this is especially true with added sugars. I see you, Starbucks. Accusatory point. Homemade is always the best, but if it's not possible, read your product labels closely. The internet makes it seem like a lot of these milk alternatives are super easy to make, but honestly, they probably be lying. We'll find out, because we're going to try to make some of them. That's for dang sure. Also, I was honestly team oat until I tried 
the oat milk we had earlier and eh, and then the macadamia nut milk changed my life so and i think it's gonna change mine and it might change a lot of you guys so go try some milkadamia or some other brand of macadamia nut milk think of the bees bees are almond important. milk kills bees and they're dying and we need the bees so there we have it if you disagree with our final verdict, you can let us know by sending us an email at copopod at gmail.com. And if you'd like to send us argument topic suggestions for future episodes, you can send us an email with debate about it in the subject line. Or put court of appeal in the subject line if you want to share any thoughts, updates, or additional argument points on previous topics. And as always, you can follow us on Instagram at copopod. Copapod. What are we arguing next week well you see what do i see when you're making a, a pb and j sandwich what what do you choose how do you like your peanut butter do you like it creamy or do you like it crunchy it's for me to know and for everybody else to find out next yeah week. so check in next week thank you guys so much for listening go ahead and pop into apple podcast or google podcast to leave court of public opinion podcast five stars and tell your friends leave a written review please <laughs> please 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 leave a written review as well that will really help the podcast spread and enables us to see what you think of our show and lastly a very special thanks to nathan rees for who i met last week yeah so nice to at that you. concert who designed our court of public opinion podcast logo aj Curtin for writing recording and producing our theme music and gerard marquez for being the voice of our bailiff at the beginning of every episode we really appreciate you guys' contributions, so thank you. And thank you guys, the Peanuts, for listening. Catch you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>